Hey guys, so on today's adventures, we're going to get a facial. So the place is downtown on 14th Street. You'll see it here when you're walking and then it's like a little shop here. You come in, they greet you. They're extremely friendly, hello. <laughs> so this is the area where you kind of enter calm setting bathroom bathroom looks good very clean love it they have some good reads over here and here is where So there's basically five main things that I do. Okay. So I guess I can like one more, one more. Um, oh my god! I don't know how much going crazy you have. You gonna have me looking crazy? Okay. <laughs> yes, I feel like everything. You gotta take everything off, like you in the airport, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> Alright, okay. you said earrings too. Oh snap, thank you. Okay. Rings and all. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> you need the booking. For real. <laughs> Alright. Perfect. Woo! Be a face. Is the bed okay? Yes. It's, like, it's good, yes. This nigga on back so good. Cause driving, that thing will kill your back. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start off with the first question. Now. Yes, please. So the first question is how do, you, how do you feel about the facials that include shaving the face? Does that make sense? Getting the peach fuzz off and all those things. So those are add ons to facials that you can get. That question is like really complex. But basically, it's called dermaplaning. Mm -hmm. And it's shaving the face, but not necessarily like what we think as like with a razor. Yeah, I've seen yes. like a, the LJ do it on her YouTube channel. I do it personally on myself. Yeah. Um, it's great for makeup wears, I would say, because it definitely applies the foundation beautifully. Yes. Um, it's a form of exfoliation, mm -hmm. and a lot of people kind of miss that part, and so they would exfoliate on top of getting that service. So you're not you don't supposed do that. to okay. for like a month because it's very strong. So, oh. so that's why people like break out, they get irritated, um, and they think it's because of that. Oh, okay. Right? And then during the facials, I don't really like to recommend it because with facials, you already automatically get exfoliation. Okay. Along with some type of peel with the mask. Mm. So in the sense, you're kind of getting like a triple exfoliation when you add that service. Mm. And that's really, really, really bad. Okay. Um, no one ever needs that. So you said it's not necessarily like a razor. It's like called the number 10 blade. Okay. Um, if you Amazon, that's where I got mine. But okay. it has to be, so the blades have different sizes, but um. it has to be number 10. Okay. That one, if you was to cut yourself, but it's really hard to, it will feel like a paper cut. Okay. So it stings, but it's really tiny. Like, I've cut myself, like, by accident. Because mm -hmm. I was, like, rushing. So, yeah. Okay. Pros and cons. Yes. I Would love you recommend pictures. people of trying course. it? Yes. Themselves? Especially people, you know. Okay. Definitely get a professional lead. Okay. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, Aaliyah J and, like, a whole bunch of other, like, artists, they've done it. Well, I'm pretty sure they just saw a video. Exactly. And mimic the video. Yeah. So. And in a sense, it is easy because you just have to go one direction going up. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, we think shaving and we think up, down, left, right. Because, you know, you don't want to feel like... The little stubs you know how mm. we like naturally shave like down there yeah and you go all types of east west north south <laughs> just to People's, make sure it's uh -huh. 
<laughs> no, serious. And people kind of treat that like on the face. Mm. So, and you can't at all. It's two okay. different hairs that you're removing. Okay. Does the, does the hair grow back fast? No. Back it, on the face? Not at all. It honestly, and you'll know when it's growing back because it kind of, your face kind of itches. It kind of feels like, I don't want to like make this sound weird, but it mm -hmm. kind of feels like little worms. Mm. So it kind of feels like, but that's just literally the hair. You know when you get a wax, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but on your face. Okay. Um, but you start feeling that literally week three. Okay. So mine's gonna last up to six weeks. So that's why I love to do it. And then if I am exfoliating, it's very, very light. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't even ask you, are you allergic to nuts? I'm not allergic to anything. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine. Ah, right. Ah. <laughs> Yo. So how often would you recommend doing? Yes. I do it once every three months. Okay. That's really okay. ideal. Okay. And is the hair noticeable when it grows back or? No, it honestly just looks like little peach fuzz. If you're lighter complexion like me and you have dark hair, mm -hmm. you can kind of see like a little six o'clock shadow okay. when it grows back. <laughs> but you know, if you're a makeup wearer, you know, concealer, boom, boom. Mm. That's what I was saying. I'm like, I know it would make my makeup look so much Beautiful. better. But yes. you honestly have really soft skin. But Thank if you. you, a lot of people notice like patchiness with their like powders and foundation, mm -hmm. and it's literally because the tiny hairs. Mm -hmm. So, and mm -hmm. it's not because of the type of brush. Or mm -hmm. the, it's not it's mixing just well. The hairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So if. Do you think that's something that you know would be able to be done one time or once you do it you have to continuously do it? No, definitely you can turn it on and off. Okay. Like so for instance, I'm a perfect example. If you want to look closely at me, so this mm -hmm. is it growing back. Um probably You don't have any makeup on? No, nothing. Okay. Um so I get the hairs like here. And this is basically where like the contour and that area so it's always skippy and patchy for me. Yeah, it looks good. But it's like know, literally like baby hairs. Yeah, that's it's like it, nothing. It's called Bella's hair. Okay. And which is known as baby hair. Right. So, no, you're on point. Literally, it's the hair that was originally there, but it grows back. Okay. So it's not like it's going to grow any thicker or stronger. That was like literally one of my biggest worries. I'm like, God forbid I do this. No, now I'm going to be going. You, you should have oh told me. Gosh. I literally have... And like the box comes with like I think like ten blades or fifteen. Mm -hmm. And I, mind you, you need one every three months, so right. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So question number two. As far as pimples and things like that, I don't know if this was a myth or something that should be done or shouldn't be done. How do you feel about putting toothpaste mm -hmm. on like? <laughs> pimples zits do you feel like that's something that works you should do it it's recommended to avoid okay so it's definitely something we all grew up on mm -hmm. <laughs> um i honestly do it to this day okay only if i don't have i usually have like pimple creams okay or like a spot treatment okay um so the idea with toothpaste there's nothing technically in toothpaste that's gonna like kill the pimple, the bacteria. It just dries it. it. That's all you're trying to do is just dry, like kind of freeze the pimple in place. Mm -hmm. And then people usually kind of, it just makes it easier to like kind of pick off. Because mm -hmm. people are, with pimples, they don't like the texture. Right. So you put the pimple, it gets really hard, and then you flick it off, but then you're kind of left with the pigmentation. Right. So obviously it does a good job just making it hard really. right but everything else <laughs> no but then it's just like for all that you kind of you should have just scratched the pimple right you know so it's not you know the minty cool feeling it's not like it's doing anything mm -hmm. it if anything it just reduces the redness okay <laughs> okay but as far as really trying to kill that bacteria in that pimple no okay one of my other questions were how often should people do face masks? Well, I know there's probably different kinds, right? Of course. Mm -hmm. There's so many masks out there because there's different skin types. Mm -hmm. Masks should definitely be done once a week. Think of it as kind of like a multivitamin. Mask doesn't penetrate that deep into the skin, right? Really? So you want to pick the mask based on what you see surface level of the skin. Okay. So if you're feeling dry, that's more deeper. 
into the skin. Mm -hmm. So a mask is not gonna give you hydration. That pure hydration that your skin actually needs. Oh. It'll definitely leave like some slime on top of it. So that's why I say whatever you have visibly mm -hmm. wrong appearance wise with your skin. So you know, dullness. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go, oh, how does your skin look dull? No, it's a thing. Yeah. You know, like so for me my skin looks dull if it looks kinda like greenish. Um, Cause I have a natural olive undertone, mm -hmm. so you can kind of see that green peek through. Okay. Um, but for someone with more darker complexion, it could be more reddish, it could be orange, it could be yellow. Mm -hmm. Like you'll notice. Like the undertone, like when you're shopping for makeup. Absolutely. Okay. So if you notice that peeking through unusually, and you know how you look when you look sick, mm -hmm. you know, very lifeless. You know, you do kind of look like pale. So going back to the mask. When it comes to masks, um, once a week, definitely once a week, you know, mm -hmm. Sunday, ideally, mm -hmm. it's like your downtime. <laughs> um, but you want to look for masks that's good for you. Right, like those cheesy ones, mm -hmm. but that's actually the best gonna give ones. you those results. Yeah. Um, and I usually like to do masks, you know, maybe before makeup or if you know you have something planned like the next day, mm -hmm. you know, you'll definitely see the results the next day. So my next question now, yes. um, of course people have different skin types and things like that. How do you identify what's your skin type? Like dry, medium dry, I don't even know. Like No, no, yeah. So there's skin types and skin conditions, mm. right? So a skin type, like mm. you said, there's basically three, dry, oily. Well, it gets kind of complicated because it's also like makeup, you know, mm -hmm. there's two undertones, yellow and pink, but it, you can really go even more deeper, say for, like olive and red. For skin types? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, because you know, prior to this, I used to work on MAC. Yeah. So I have like... That makeup knowledge. Experience. Which mm -hmm. goes with the aesthetic license. Yeah. You know. But, um, so for instance... So for a, con a skin condition could be like acne, you know, acne skin or rosacea. Like uh, yes. Okay. A, um, like a chronic thing that your skin is constantly going through. Okay. Psoriasis. That's the condition of it. Um, tight, dry, oily, sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, so the signs. So actually, I'm about to skin analyze you right now. We just finished cleansing, toning, and exfoliating, so that's what I'm wiping off. Okay. And that's usually with how you can look at someone's skin better after a really good exfoliation. Okay. So that I just remove all your dead skin. So now I get to see your skin in its true form. Okay. And your lashes are safe, so don't worry. Girl! <laughs> <laughs> he was like the steam. Yes, like, no, but no. that's why I have lashes do too. Mm -hmm. So don't worry. The day that I had originally wrote you, when you said tomorrow, I was like, perfect, but I just did my lashes. So I was like, mm, maybe this is not the smartest idea. So. No, no. You definitely could get facial with lashes, don't worry. Okay, y'all hear that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, so, um, let me just finish up and then you can actually look at your skin just you want to look at the skin basically have different zones right mm -hmm. so this is the zone five four the cheeks three two and then the mouth area one mm -hmm. and then the decollete is in another area um so just from looking at it mm -hmm. you do have like a natural shine on your nose mm -hmm. which is very common it'd be greasy uh, with the makeup <laughs> for real it's okay no, that just means your pores are just a little more active there. Um, so you're just, and you know, the steamer is literally on you, so mm -hmm. like, they're all open and it's like. <laughs> but your skin is very clean, I will say that. Your mm -hmm. forehead is a little congested. Mm -hmm. See some pigmentation from picking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and on the chin area too, which is okay. But um, from touch, no texture, you have very 
hydrated skin. Okay. So usually if you are dry or dehydrated, mm -hmm. people get very small fine lines on the forehead. Okay. So if I was to like pinch it and it looked like a recordian almost, mm -hmm. then that shows like yeah, dry. super, super dry. Yeah. So okay. that would mean you don't, you wouldn't necessarily need like a thick moisturizer. You would need oil. Oh, okay. And that's the big difference between dry and dehydrated. Okay. Dry, think of you need oil, dehydrated, dehydration, you need water. Oh, like water. creams. Yes. Yeah. Um, so for you, I would definitely say your combo because you're normal oily. So you're oily here, but mm -hmm. you're normal everywhere else. Okay. And that's your skin type, your skin condition. You have hyperpigmentation. And that's it. You know, you have natural darkness here and here but my forehead is like acne. my worst part i think because when i like oil my hair uh -huh. sometimes the oil just automatically drips be careful because that could clog it so bad mm -hmm. so it's recommended to go to a professional to basically analyze your skin type correct of course and once you find out your skin type then then you know we recommend the products that your skin is craving okay you know, and then you know, for a month, you will honestly, if you do it every night, every night for a month, you'll see the results instantly. Okay. Um, and then you switch up the products monthly. Yes, because your skin gets used to like. Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, it does. It gets tired because you know, think about it. It's like we call it a beauty prescription here. Mm -hmm. So today you're gonna leave with products that's gonna help with your pigmentation. Oh right? my gosh. Ooh. All right. Right. So you're gonna do that for a month because. It technically it takes 28 days for our skin to get tired or something. Okay. Just with a bad habit if you're trying to break one. Side like note. That. Yes. Including no. makeup, you think? Um, like if no. you're using the same foundation over and over, you think your skin... No, because then that it, that just goes with your skin type. Maybe it changed. Mm. You know, seasonally, you get more oily or more drier. Okay. So that's why you do have to get a matte foundation for the summer and a more hydrating, luminous one for the winter. Gotcha. So, okay. in that sense, yes, but you can technically wear the same foundation all year round. Okay. Just how you set it is probably how it will change or prime your skin underneath mm. so it doesn't move. Okay. Oh, you, you, you gotta have a little makeup. Yeah. All right, so let's say I'm gonna give you a regimen to do for a month and then you're gonna notice the appearance of it lighten. You can, so after that month is over, and a lot of people's like, no, I gotta do it longer because it's still not there. No, you have to switch to something else. Okay. and then go back the month after to do it again. Mm. You can't keep tormenting your skin, you know? Because mm -hmm. it's literally gonna, so the beauty prescription, you, I'm gonna give you it, your skin is gonna realize like, oh wow, like great, I'm gonna take this all in, I'm gonna lay in the skin, mm -hmm. and then it's gonna get tired because it got used to it. Mm. Um, so then you have to just like trick it in a sense. So right. then you start feeding it. Or maybe you like alternate the product so you won't use a whole line that's just dedicated for brightening. You can switch out your night creams. Mm. So you can use a hydrating one instead of one that's gonna brighten. So like each one would have the same purpose, just like so like a cleaning clear versus a, a Neutrogena versus a, a Vino, kinda like that. Yeah. But each one would have the same purpose. Absolutely. Okay. See, like nothing is even extracting out. Um, let's see. So what I'm doing, I have toner mitts on okay. with gloves and a light, and I'm just really trying to take things out. Mm -hmm. With this one that you picked here, so the problem with picking the skin mm -hmm. is that it doesn't heal properly once you know you pick it. Mm -hmm. So not only is the infection still inside. Ah! You know, and you can feel it. It kind of feels like a little ball underneath. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's the pimple that just never, you know, you scratch the top part, great, so you don't have a blackhead. Right. But because it closed up, it you got the hyperpigmentation. And this is it, not healing. Don't pick your pimple. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not. Oh, man. I've been trying to take so much, like care of my skin because it's very hydrated so i don't know if you drink a lot of water is there any questions that you get mm -hmm. often like coming here anyone who comes here like typical questions that should be answered or like people should know um i think the number one question i get is how many facials should someone get and i think there's three type of people so if you have acne, like constant breakouts, hormonal, 
Um, your skin is always getting clogged up. You have large pores. You're very oily. Mm -hmm. Visible blackheads every three weeks. Mm -hmm. okay. um, if you have really good skin, um, no real signs of aging or any hyperpigmentation seasonally. Okay. Which is, you know, four, four times, months. Yeah. Yeah. And the third one, where it's like you're in between combination skin people, which are very common, mm -hmm. they should get it monthly. Okay. One to two months. One to two months, okay. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people have the idea of like a facial, oh, I'm going to do it before my big day, or mm -hmm. a this or that. No. Never before. Facials is maintaining your skin. It's literally a deep cleanse of the skin. It's not something you do once, mm -hmm. and then you think that's it. Mm -hmm. And then another question I get a lot is, when do you actually see the results mm -hmm. of a facial? Um, and that one is tricky because all treatments are like customized and different. Mm -hmm. But ideally, you see, so like I said, our skin rejuvenates and it gets tired or it just, it works monthly, basically mm -hmm. every 20 days. So you see the facial results on top of you maintaining it after a month. Okay. Um, so you'll see a visible glow, you'll see the pigmentation lighten up, mm -hmm. you'll see your skin more hydrated, you'll see that your products, you won't need as much of it anymore. Okay. What's something you feel like helps to reduce dark circles? Basically like dark spots underneath the eye. Okay, how to yes. get rid of that? Yes. The whole shabam. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So customers that like walk into the boutique and don't necessarily get facials, mm -hmm. they ask, that's usually like a number one question too, actually. So with dark spots, unfortunately, it could be three things. The number one thing that you hear, lack of sleep, along with, I'm gonna add that in the same category, so lack of sleep and just hydration. Okay. Another thing is genetics, and genetics. It can be hereditary. It could, yes, but so the skin underneath the eye is naturally thin, but some people, it just, their veins and all their like inside them the knee peeks through so that's what you're seeing so the skin itself like if i was to cut a thin layer it's not going to be dark it's literally going to be your same complexion it's just a little window that's showing through that skin okay. so genetics as far as the thinness or the thickness of your skin okay and so it seems more darker towards african americans because just naturally when we do scar or get hyperpigmentation it just seems darker and with someone that's more fair skin, mm -hmm. theirs look even Reddish. more. Oh. Yeah, you see the veins, the greens, mm -hmm. the blues, all the hues. Mm -hmm. So that's why they look like they're like, you know, skeletons. Dying. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so. Do you think cold spoons work for cold underneath? Thighs? Not for dark circles, that's just for depuffing. Mm -hmm. So if you wake up with puffy eyes, that's the only real. You know, take an ice cream or cold spoon. Mm -hmm. But even with puffy eyes, that they say that's a, that just means you had like a lot of salt the night before. Okay. You know, it's in the sense your eye, your under eye is bloated. Okay. So think of like the food that you eat when you get bloated. So it's and it, it could you know little deposits of fat can show up anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the muffin top. Mm -hmm. You can see it in your wrist, the your sides. ankles, mm -hmm. and people get under their eye. Okay. The third thing was lack of circulation mm. um so you're you know you know how people like behind their knees you could kind of see like the veins yes it's the same thing but under the eye but usually they say like if you're a heavy sleeper on just one side mm -hmm. you know all the blood rushes to that side mm -hmm. and you know you're messing up your circulation so you technically should always be on your back, back. so that's why there's three main things. That's why I claim to know that as well marketing. It's all gonna make me. Wow. Nothing works. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. The only thing that will work is hydration. So if you see a lot of pearls here around the eye, yeah. you know. Is that why people put cucumbers over the eye? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. just asking. No, 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 it's true. Because I'm like, why do they put the cucumbers? Like, is that a thing? But. Cucumbers are like very hydrating. People usually drink it with their water, so. Yeah, I mean, it's not, sense. you know, not to discourage anyone that does it, but like, you know, you're gonna need a lot of cucumbers.
be yeah, be honest with them. Let no, them no, know. of course. No, you ain't not. You're not gonna see me with no cucumbers. I ain't doing nothing. It's not. You know, I mean, if I'm putting a fruit on my face, it's gonna be maybe like a cherry, mm. a grape, or a papaya. Why? Or avocado. And that's because those are natural like enzymes. So if you want to get creative with exfoliating, mm -hmm. you can definitely use like a fruit and actually rub it against your face. Okay, the inside. Yeah, of course, the juices. Okay. Because they naturally just eat off dead skin. Wow. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people like to do the dermal planning uh -huh. and then go in with like a uh, fruit. Okay. And wow, the skin and then do a mask. Oh my gosh. Do you guys um, provide that service here? We don't provide dermaplaning, but we provide, we have a facial where we actually use actual grapes. Mm. Yes, and we use that as a form of exfoliation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you love your job? Do you love doing things like this? Helping, you know, yes. people? I always felt like I had like healing hands and it sounds like cheesy and corny, mm -hmm. but um, I just like putting people in like a good mood because you know, the stresses of the world can really like I get into time. our mind and it shows whether how we cope, you know, mm -hmm. people overeat, mm -hmm. um, people overwork out, people, we find some type of obsession um, and you know, and overdo it sometimes. Yeah. So I always feel like if I could be a part of that little population that could just help someone like just wind down just forget about the outside world god no. bless your soul no, that's beautiful though no. it's a story you know what i mean like literally a purpose it is some people like do their jobs and it's just like oh uh, and some but, people yeah, i'm not i'm it. not religious or anything but i always did feel like i was meant to like help a lot of people in my life you know, I'm a Pisces, not to get all astrological mm -hmm. with it, but... Are you big on astrology? I am. Okay. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> but I know a lot of people, so... Mm -hmm. There's little stars to them. But yeah. No, you know, everything has its purpose. Yeah. You know? And you just find it... You make it make sense for you. Mm -hmm. Same Definitely. with religion and politics. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Whatever can help you go to sleep at night. I love my job, to answer that question. Yes, yes. I do a lot. It's very peaceful, I would say. Okay. Like, I'm never walking out of here upset. Like, Beautiful. All the clients are just very, like, you know, they call this, like, a therapy session. Yes. And it is very it therapeutic. Fit, yes. You know? It does. People be telling me all about the it. The music is, like, calming. The mm -hmm. atmosphere is just And I control so, like, all that. <gasps> yeah, I control the music. The little... Yeah. Oh, no, that's me. That little white noise machine. Oh my gosh. Do you like, not like a mix, but like you create it? Yeah. I create the ambiance. Yeah. The little candle right there, that's me. Oh my gosh. It's usually even darker. Okay. So well, this is perfect I know, for the video. Of course, <laughs> of course but imagine it gets dark. All right. Yeah. Putting people to sleep. Yes, that's the, the best part. I feel like that's why I come to work to make sure I put someone to sleep. Oh, wow. So do you still do makeup? Um, here and there for like close friends. Okay. They want so, like a quick beat. Like a side thing. Yeah, but not I'm not freelancing or anything. Okay. So compared to the two, uh, makeup and skincare. Skincare, yes. Which one do I love? Yes. Ooh, it's so hard. <laughs> no, it is so hard. Because makeup is so transformative. Um, it's personal. It's creative yeah and that's literally like how i release all my everything. that's your escape that's yeah. skincare i feel like that's my gift to others mm. you know so it's yin and yang for me yes okay you know so i can't really pick but if i was to pick um i think makeup okay because you can literally make yourself into anything yes you know you can literally definitely. there's so many different mediums you, you don't just have to use like foundation you can use you know, there's this camouflage makeup, there's aesthetic, there's the people that could like drag and there's you know it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's an art, it's a little art. Wow. Yeah, cute questions. Look at you. Oh, thank all professional. you. professional. <laughs> I love it. I'm trying my best mm -hmm. girl. I'm trying my best. Good.
So when you go home tonight, um, I'm putting products that are meant for like nighttime use. Okay. So don't like go to the gym and like try to sweat this out or anything. Okay. Oh. <laughs> What was the process of this like facial? We started with the cleanse. Okay. And then we went with exfoliation. Mm -hmm. And then we double exfoliated with a Ferrero, which okay. is similar to like a Clarisonic, like a spin brush. Okay. Um, and then we toned. Mm -hmm. And then we did extractions. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we, I applied a oil. Okay. And massage your face. Mm -hmm. So that's just gonna help penetrate the product, uh, the oil deeper. And the oil was um, a brightening oil. Okay. Not a bleaching. Okay. Not a just oil. just yeah. a tad brightening. You know. Something natural. Yes. <laughs> it's a cold pressed oil. It's very light. Um, very hydrating too. Okay. A lot of benefits to it. It feels good. It feels yeah. like. Well, that oil you probably don't feel now. That's what I'm saying. Like it feels like natural. Right. Like I feel, feel like hydrated, natural, but I don't. Yes. Yes. Um, and then we put a mask. We put a hydrating mask and a glycolic mask. I missed two together oh. underneath that penetrate. So it was a mask that you remove. Yes. Okay. Do you know the mask that when they put it on, they kind of like roll it off? You and know I the jelly mask. Jelly mask. No, they're very gimmicky. They. They do absolutely nothing. Unfortunately, they're just all for marketing. It looks cool. They had they add glitter. And uh huh. Things. People say you can save them. Sure. Save. You can save them, but the, you might as well just put lotion. Exactly. <laughs> we getting us out here. Y'all hear this? For the under eye creams, don't mm -hmm. buy it. The jelly mask, don't buy it. The cucumbers, just eat it. <laughs> so, I literally just left from completing my facial and my face feels amazing it feels so good it feels so hydrated so fresh I'm walking to my car right now so i literally just finished my facial and my face feels so good. It feels so like refreshed, hydrated. Um, it literally does not feel like anything is on my face, which is how I like my face to feel. So today I found out my skin type, found out things about my face that I didn't know before, which was great. So now I know how to properly take care of my skin. The experience was amazing like i loved it and i learned that there is nothing that you can do to solve the dark spots or the dark you know the dark area underneath your eye i would literally recommend anyone to do this number one if you're serious about your skin type or just literally taking care of your skin if, if you're a makeup wearer i definitely recommend this if you're a non-makeup wearer i definitely recommend this because who doesn't want their face to be you know looking bomb like her vibe was amazing from someone who does like facials and things like that at home or like face mask and like downtime it was nothing compared to that like it was like 10 15 times better like i'm telling you guys i am telling you guys please 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 before 2020 is over please at least one time go and get a facial appointment you will definitely definitely not regret it and there's definitely more pros and no cons like why would you not want to know what skin type you have so you you know you know if you're buying the correct products or not like whether Cetaphil, Nivea, um, Johnson & Johnson you know those type of moisturizers are they helping our skin like it's very very important for you to know those things if you care about how
how you look like a care about your face like that's that's the first thing someone sees when they look at you so why not take care of it why not cherish it why not just do the damn thing do yourself a favor please